everybody. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're talking essential oils for pets tonight. So um, I would ask you to keep your line muted. I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody now. And uh, at the end, um, I can take some, some questions, okay? So keep your questions in mind. You can also put them in the chat if it is based on something that I'm talking about and you want clarity in that moment. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, even as people are hopping on. And you all are going to get this recording so that you can go back and look at it. Um, so don't feel like you got to take take a lot of crazy notes. So um, so happy that you're all here. And uh, this is absolutely one of my favorite topics, as you will soon realize why. But my name is Allie Phillips. And uh, maybe Rudy will join on the back of my chair like he usually does during a Zoom. So we'll see. Right now he's sitting on the heated crystal mat downstairs. So we'll, we'll, I already encouraged him to come up here. So we'll see if he does. Um, but in, in this presentation, none of this information is meant to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go through some of the main questions that I get about essential oils for pets. And I'm going to share my knowledge, my experience, you know, my training, my hands on practice of how I use oils, why I use oils, the methods that I use. And then if you want to go deeper, I'll, I'll give you some ideas on how to do that. But the one thing that I always recommend to people is to please, please, please know why you're using an oil before you use it with your pet. And you need to know for what you're using it for. And this is where getting yourself some good written material on essential oils for pets is important. So I'm gonna talk briefly about my book, The Oily Pet, um, but I would, I would also recommend, if you can still find it, the old animal desk reference, the animal essential oil desk reference. It's out of print, but if you can still find it, that is a good one to get. It's a lot, it's technical, it's a lot more detailed, it's usually more, than a pet parent needs. But if you work in animal protection or animal care, that is a book that you're gonna to wanna to try to find. And it's probably on Amazon. <laughs> so, all right. So let me tell you about me and why, why I love this topic. And this is you know, one, one of my niches when it comes to essential oils. So I've been an attorney for 27 years. And the whole time I have spent focusing on criminal prosecution. I was a criminal prosecutor in the courtroom for many years. I moved out to Washington, DC. I worked nationally to teach at criminal justice conferences. And my specialty for almost all of that time has been animal abuse and how it links to family violence. So that still is my legal expertise today. And I teach all over the world at legal conferences, animal protection conferences. I teach for a lot of domestic violence conferences. I teach prosecutors and law enforcement on uh, recognizing, reporting, investigating, and prosecuting animal abuse. So now you all know why I snort oils all the time. Speaking of that, everybody grab an oil. Here, I'm, I always keep them handy. <laughs> grab an oil. This is going to be a this is going to be a good class. And so as a result of that expertise. Oh, that's good stuff. Um, that was magnify your purpose. That's one of my mainstays. Um, as a result of that, um, I am the founder and CEO of sheltering animals and families together. It is a global initiative working with domestic violence shelters to create on site pet housing. So I have about 300 shelters in six countries and 46 states. 
all domestic violence shelters that are housing pets on site. Um, so I've been leading the movement in that regard because I had a crazy idea when I was a prosecutor. 11 years ago, I started Manifested Harmony, my energy healing business, because I started getting fascinated by healing and wellness. And one thing led to another. And I started using essential oils nine years ago, last Monday. <laughs> so uh, nine years ago, no, last Sunday. So uh, February 13th of 2013, I started. I've written a lot of books, uh, over 15 animal protection legal publications. Um, I am a longtime animal shelter volunteer and advocate. I have lobbied. Um, I used to work for the American Humane Association in DC and I ran their lobbying of office. So I have lobbied on behalf of animals. Um, and so I kind of bring everything together and at the foundation of all of my work is animals. So I even have a cat unicorn on my wall here. Did anybody notice that? <laughs> There's nothing like giving a presentation to a group of domestic violence professionals or, or judges. And, I'm, and I always wonder, do they even see the cat unicorn? <laughs> she is with me in all my presentations. All right. Um, I have also been invited on three occasions to speak on Young Living Corporate's stage about essential oils for pets, particularly uh, essential oils for uh, rescues, for animal shelters, and for abused and neglected pets. So really blending my legal expertise with my essential oil expertise. And we really need to lobby Young Living to bring back the animal conference because it was awesome. Put in the chat if you ever had a chance to go to it. It was out at the Mona Utah farm. It was phenomenal, phenomenal conference. So, um, and I'm also the author of The Oily Pet, The Oily Pet book. And if you have not grabbed your copy, um, use that coupon code Zoom at checkout and you'll get 10%. Um, so I have Put, and I'm not going to rehash what's in this, that book because that book is foundational. All the things that you need to think about before you even get to oils, okay? Thinking about toxins in the home, thinking about emotional toxins in the home. I work with a lot of dogs that have anxiety and stress-related behavior issues, and I can link it to people in the home. So that book gives you a phenomenal foundation of all the things to think about because you, you don't know what you don't know. Like sometimes we don't even know what to think about. We don't even know what questions to ask. So it's a really, really super good foundational book. Um, nowhere in the book do I mention Young Living because as an attorney, I respect their trademark. So you're not gonna see any mention of their name, of their blends, which are trademarked. Um, but there's a lot of recommendations with single oils. In this presentation, I'm going to give you some blends and stuff that you can use. And then if you're a crystal fanatic like I am, I'm an advanced crystal master. I teach people the science of crystals as well as just the joy and the wellness of how they work with us. Um, that has been a phenomenon that's been sweeping the world lately. And so um, I put all of my 10 plus years of expertise working with crystals in the oily crystal book because sadly I see some essential oil influencers making really dangerous recommendations. Again, they don't know what they don't know. So this book explains how you can safely do it because most crystals are toxic. Urgh. So, all right. So um, I've always had cats and people tend to freak out when it comes to essential oils and cats. So Stella, Rudy, and Dobby, they are oily cats. I'm going to share at the end what their daily routine is. You're going to see, see them in this presentation. But because of all of the cats that I have had over the last nine years, and I used essential oils for about 15 years before I joined Young Living, again, I didn't know what I didn't know. Thank goodness I never used any of those other cheap, store-brought, adulterated brands with my cats. I'm so glad I never did that. You know, which, which is why I wrote the Oily Pet book because 
there's a lot of misinformation on social media. I, 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 I mean, I, I use social media to educate people. And it's almost to the point where it's like, my gosh, it's like you almost can't believe anything on social media anymore. You know, I always envision like a seven year old sitting behind his computer, you know, just making up fake graphics. It's like, you know, if, if there is no ownership on a graphic, especially when it comes to essential oils and pets, my recommendation is to outright disregard it. Anything that I put on social media has my business name on it. It can absolutely be tracked back to me. But there's a lot of misinformation about the dangers of essential oils for pets. There are animal care professionals making broad statements about oils that sweep in Young Living. And I'm going to explain why, why I only recommend Young Living. I'm going to give you the rationale behind that. Um, but they make these broad sweeping statements, all essential oils are bad for pets. No, no, I can tell you that right, right now. And, you know, there are people that are citing to studies, but those studies never mention what brand they tested. And in the chat, can you let me know what brand of oil you use? Okay, because I'm, I, believe me, I am not here to bash any other brand, not my style, that's not what I do. But people are citing to studies and then broad brushing it, that it relates to every oil brand. And that is just wrong. That is just wrong. Because I think in the grand scheme of the world, we all recognize that there are good products and there are bad products. We recognize in the grocery store that you can buy a genetically modified tomato that has no taste or you can go into your backyard and you can grow an organic tomato that just tastes like sunshine right i mean there, there's just there's all sorts of different ones so yeah i'm seeing a whole lot of young living all right so i feel very strongly about this information it's why i wrote the book it's why i do these presentations and you know if if you are in a team and can gather 20 people online, I will do this or any, the oil, or even the oily crystal class, I will do it for your team. Okay, just, just remember that. Um, I do this because I want people in Young Living to become proficient in oils for animals because we are the go-to animal oil company. And the more of us that can really shut down folklore and myth, the better it's going to be for all animals. So the number one question I get, why do I only recommend Young Living? All right, so in the Oily Pet book, I actually give you a test of how to determine if a brand is safe. It's never about whether is lemon safe, is eucalyptus safe? That's not it. That, that is not the question to be asking. And I give, I give you a test in the book. Here's why I only recommend Young Living. When I started with Young Living nine years ago, I had about 50, five zero bottles of essential oils from a company that labeled their oils pure and natural. Oh my word, they were the furthest thing from that because I didn't, I didn't realize that when a label says, don't put it on your skin, don't ingest it, even if it's lemon or peppermint, don't use with pets, don't use with babies. I didn't realize that that label was telling me we put something else in the bottle, but under federal labeling laws, we don't have to tell you. So as an attorney, I research federal labeling laws because that's just how my brain works. And so when I learned about Young Living, and I mean, it really took me a while to dig into this information, but here's what makes my lawyer brain happy because I'm always thinking liability. I don't ever wanna recommend something 
and have somebody go out and have an adverse experience and come back on me. I don't think any of you want that. So everything I'm going to talk about in this presentation only relates to Young Living. You cannot take any of this information and use it with another brand at all. If you do it, do it. You're doing it at, at the harm and the potential death of your companion animal. That's that's how firm I'm gonna be about that for anybody who's watching this recording and uses another brand. Young Living promotes their oils for pets. It's on their website, it's in their blog. They have a line of products, the Animal Sense line. They were the first company to do this. They were the first company to put on an animal essential oil conference to have a veterinary advisory council. The books on the market that are talking about oils for pets are overwhelmingly coming from young living experts in the field, including the oily pet, where I don't mention young living's name, but boy, when you read that book, it's like, mm, we kind of know what Allie's talking about. They have consistently promoted their products for pets. Gary Young, at his core, loved animals. Have any of you ever been out to the Mona farm? It is packed with animals. I've never seen so many horses in my life. He rescued um, roadside circus animals. In the very back of the farm, he has a camel. He has white buffalo. He has uh, miniature horses, miniature donkeys. He's got a couple of miniature cows. Oh my word, they are so cute. They're just so snuggly. He has um, reindeer, elk. That man had a heart for animals. Absolutely had a heart for animals. So if you get a chance, I hope you all go to convention, take the farm day, go to the farm. And when everybody else is up front, you know, you know, eating their lavender ice cream, go to the very back of the farm and you're going to find all those animals. It, it's unbelievable. Gary loved animals. And I talked to him at one of the animal conferences and, and he, was, he, he was sharing with a bunch of us. He said, I created all of our products to be used by all beings, whether you're two-legged or four-legged. I created these products for all of us. Because if it's not safe for an animal, it sure as heck is not safe for us. Never forget that. The other thing is the seed to seal promise. That is not just a label. That is not just a label. This, this is precisely what makes our oil safe for animals, including cats. It's because of how we grow the botanicals the land that Gary started with, the seeds. You know, he's not heading into Home Depot to find lavender seeds. That's not what Young Living does. I mean, the, the purest seeds that have not been touched by chemicals or pesticides. We harvest properly at the right time, at the right season. You know, right now they're in the middle of, of harvest up in Idaho because of the frigid cold temperatures. They don't harvest the blue spruce and the balsam fir in the summer. That's not when you get the best oils. They do it at the right time. And then we fully distill, which allows the balancing of all the constituents, all the parts and pieces to come out because here, here's where a lot of people don't understand why, for example, Young Living tea tree oil is safe to be used, especially with cats, but yet an organic tea tree could harm or kill a cat. Here's why. It's because of, because of all of this, including the distillation, because an essential oil self-regulates. It regulates itself if all the parts and pieces are in it. But if a distiller is rushing it, using solvents and chemicals, doing a double distillation, if they are not doing it properly for that botanical, because they're all different, if they're not doing it properly, that's what makes it unsafe because all the parts and pieces, all the constituents are not there. That's what allows 
our citrus oils, our tea tree, and I will say all of our oils without hesitation to be used safely around pets and with pets and other brands will harm. A lot of other brands can't tell you where the botanicals were grown. They certainly didn't control the process. Young Living does. Young Living is the only company with their farms and 100% of the oils coming from their farms. This is a huge, huge, huge deal. And then I look at the labels of other companies. And, you know, when I teach in person classes, I have a bottle of an organic lemon oil. And right on the label, it says, do not ingest. Since when can you not ingest lemon, especially organic? They are telling you that they put something else in the bottle and everybody can smell it that I pass it around to. These are the oils that cannot be anywhere around pets, not even diffusing, not even cleaning your house. I, I get them out of your home. And if the company does not mention pets on their website at all, they should not be used around pets, period. Because it's the, it's the equivalent. I was literally just having this conversation with a bunch of people at an expo last weekend. Would you give a fiber laxative to a newborn baby? No. No. There's a really popular brand on the market. They don't advertise it. They don't promote it to be given with newborn babies. Now, do they say, don't give it to babies? No, but they don't promote it that way. So you don't do it. Would you feed dog food to your children? No, because it's not meant for human consumption. They don't have to tell you that. They don't have to tell you that. So on the essential oil labels, if, if they are not saying anything about pets on their website, they are telling you, don't use the oils with pets because we're literally giving you no instruction on how to do it. We're not promoting it. And so when it comes to having my back, Young Living has my back because they promote their products for pets. And if you go onto their blog, they, they, they talk about oils for pets far beyond the animal sense line. And the oils that I use with pets, far beyond the animal sense line. The animal sense line is wonderful. I rarely use it. Because we have like 700 other products that we can use, okay? So that's why I only recommend Young Living. All right. Let's go to the next question that I get. Will Young Living Oils kill my cat? Uh, no. But you got to learn how to use them in a safe way. Here's the thing. Here, here's why people get so nervous about essential oils in cats, like even diffusing. is because cats are deficient in, um, it's called the cytochrome P450 liver metabolism pathway. That is what helps the liver to metabolize and excrete compounds like medication, toxins, essential oils. They are deficient in this. They are not missing it. I go bananas when I see animal professionals saying that they cannot excrete essential oils. Well, if they can't excrete essential oils, then they can't excrete medication out of their body. So, that, I mean, that's just flat out wrong. But this deficiency is unique to felines. And, and I understand it's why people are nervous about using oils around cats. So what's interesting, there was a study in 2017 that actually found that cats excrete differently than dogs, horses, humans, rabbits. And they excrete more in line with how plants excrete essential oils. Yes, plants excrete essential oils out of their system. So, you know, when, when I was reading the study, I was laughing because I'm like, well, of course, cats have to be different. They just have to be. That's how they are. <laughs> so they excrete differently. And it's a slower elimination out of their liver. 
And because of the slower elimination, it can result in buildup. But here's the thing, we give our cats medication that passes through the liver. And our cats are surrounded by toxins and they can pass those because before we all got into Young Living, how many of us had toxins in our home? Like candles, plugins, sprays, wax warmers, toxic cleaners. I can't believe I didn't kill us all. I mean, honestly, I can't believe I didn't kill us all in the house. Everybody was fine. Over time, it will build up. Even with some of the horrible brands out there, are, are cats and dogs and animals literally dropping dead all over the place? No, they're not. But one scary story will make the rounds on Facebook and people freak out and start making blanket statements. Untrained veterinarians and animal protection professionals start making blanket statements and they have zero training in essential oils. The, that would be like me giving a presentation on how to change the transmission on your car. Yeah, Allie doesn't know how to do that. I'm pretty sure I don't even know where the transmission is in my car. <laughs> I let my car guy take care of that. Not my specialty. I know nothing about it, so I'm not going to talk about it. So when I hear animal professionals talking about something that they have no training and education in, I lose it. I lose it and I will publicly comment on their posts. So when I see these scary stories, because everybody tags me in them, be careful about jumping in with a response. Okay. I do see Unfortunately, a lot of young living people jumping in and being, I know, I know nobody means it, but it's coming off judgmental, like, oh, well, if you use young living, this wouldn't have happened. No, if, if, if it is a real story, that person is in pain and we ought to embrace them and help them and not guilt them. But here's, here's what I see about these stories because they make it around every couple of years and, and we're actually due to have one come around again. I mean, they just come around like clockwork. We don't know the prior health of the pet. We don't know the age of the pet. We don't know what toxins were in the home that could have slowly poisoned this pet. We don't know what brand of essential oil was used. They never share that. Sometimes we don't even know what individual oil was used. It's just a blanket statement. And then we start seeing the graphs that you can't use pine oil, you can't use citrus, you can't use tea tree. And it's like, oh my gosh, organic tomato or genetically modified? Young living oil or store-bought adulterated oil? There's a huge difference. We cannot broad base and sweep in all essential oils with these with these statements you know it, it's to me it's all common sense but too many people think that they can be you know buy a store-bought adulterated oil and use it like we use it in young living and they can't so we have to be vocal we have to educate um because they don't know what they don't know so will young living oils kill my cat no if you dump a bottle of sage oil on your cat, your cat isn't going to feel good. Don't do that. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do that to yourself. Here's the thing. Start slow. Okay. When you're, when you're putting oils in your diffuser, like the desert mist, um, the area, uh, the dew drop. I know on the package, it says eight to 10 drops. I don't even do that for me. Four. Four is sufficient because here's the thing. If your diffuser smells really strong to you, it is really, 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 really strong to your pets. They have a heightened sense of smell. So be cautious about that. Start slow. Like don't bring a new pet into your house or, or don't have your first oil that you're diffusing be straight cinnamon oil. That's strong. <laughs> don't do that. Start, start mild with a few drops and always give them a place to go 
so they can get away. Okay, now for topical application on cats and, and dogs under 25 pounds, I always dilute in an organic cold pressed carrier oil. If you're not using the V6 oil, organic cold press because carrier oils are as adulterated as essential oils okay organic cold pressed so i create roller bottles or take your old empty essential oil bottles clean them out and use that to create pre-diluted blends okay so my cats have like a hairball blend and and i'll show you at the end what i give them every day but no Young living oils are not going to kill your cats. Now, do I need to use sage oil with my cat? No. If I wanted to use sage oil, it is for a reason. I find that reason in another oil because sage is a hot oil. Okay. Instead of sage, I'll use copaiba. So we don't have to use all the oils with our pets. I mean, there's literally about 10 oils that I go to for everything. So I try to find the softest, gentlest one that I can, but I never hesitate at all. And I never hesitate what I diffuse in the house because I diffuse a lot of citrus oils. And when, and when I even hear young living leaders talking about what well, you can't diffuse citrus in front of cats, you know, in the, in the home of cats, really? I've been doing it for nine years, almost every day. And when I take my cats to their vet for their annual checkup, their lab results show that they're fine. Okay, so again, not everybody has this sort of in-depth knowledge. Okay, the next question I get is, what oils do I use with my sick pet? Okay, my short answer is, we don't diagnose or treat with essential oils because even if you're a veterinarian, we can't talk about oils that way. FDA doesn't allow it. We do not want FDA regulation. We do not want to be regulated like pharmaceuticals, okay? And I get these messages all the time and it's like, nope, not gonna answer it. I know what to, I know what to tell you and I will try to indirectly, you know, if, you, if, if somebody schedules a consultation, I will indirectly help them find the answer. But this is where you got to have a really good oil book so that you can do your own research and find your own answer. You can't go on to Google. You're not going to find appropriate Young Living information. So that's why I mentioned the Animal Essential Oil Desk Reference. Try to find it. Um, but the Oily Pet, I give recommendations in there uh, that'll give you some ideas. Um, what I do is I help people keep their pets healthy. When people come to me and their pet is in, you know, they have a stage four fatal disease, you're asking a whole heck of a lot of the oils at that point. And it's, it's a little too late. The body is already so degraded at stage four. We need to get ahead of this. Just like in yourself, don't wait for a problem. We, this is why we don't use essential oils like medicine. In medicine, they wait for a problem, right? Wait for a problem, schlop a Band-Aid on it, call the pharmaceutical, and hope that it gets better. That's not how we use oils, okay? We got to stop thinking like medicine. People ask me all the time, well, how often do I use it? I don't know, how, how off, however often you want to. This is not like take a pill every 24 hours. We have to stop thinking like, medicine and we have to teach our people to stop thinking like medicine so when you help a pet with oils like and i go over this in the oily pet book um, always start with diet always look at household toxins always look at quality of life and stress in the home and then you can start talking about oils because if a pet has digestive problems and they are eating a really poor diet that's where you start start with food then we'll talk oils. You know, when pets are having skin issues, I always talk diet first, then we'll get to oils. When pets are having behavioral problems, I want to know what's going on in the home first, then we'll talk oils. Okay. We don't use them like 
a band-aid, like a prescription. You got to get to the root of it. So I, you know, I would recommend to all of you, how do you use the oils? And then now you know how to use them with your pets. Okay. All right. Next question I get, what oils are safe to use with pets? Well, look at what I previously talked about. I have no hesitation with the Young Living oils at all. Now, am I going to use sage with a pet? No, because there's other options. Am I going to use tea tree? In one product, I will. Does anybody want to guess the one product in Young Living for animals that has tea tree in it? Anybody have an idea? The Animal Sense Ointment has tea tree in it. Animal Sense Ointment has tea tree in it. So I asked Gary that question. I said, Gary, how, how, do, how do we deal with, with the uh, misinformed who say well, you can never give tea tree to an animal, especially a cat? How do we explain the Animal Sense Ointment? <laughs> and he, he grabbed me by my shoulders and he said, Allie, if our tea tree was killing cats and other animals, there is another essential oil company out there that would be filing press releases with the media every single day to try to take us down. <laughs> he had a really good sense of humor. And I'm like, oh, touche, touche. That is one of the oldest products in Young Living. Gary created that like 25 some years ago for his horses. It's one of the oldest products. If there were dead cats all over the place because of the animal sense ointment, we'd all know about it, okay? So, so when people ask me what oils are safe to use with pets, if you're in Young Living, you're good, but you don't have to use all the oils. You know, fine. You don't have to use oregano. Look, like I said at the beginning, why do you wanna use an oil with your pet? If oregano comes up as an option, that's a hot oil. Yeah, you can dilute it in a carrier oil and it'll be better. Trust me, I put straight oregano on my skin the other day. Holy moly. I think I saw my dead grandmother. That was hot. That, that was crazy. It's like, what? <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> it, was, it was really red for about 24 hours. So there are other options. That's why when you have a good essential oil book, you can look up other options. You know, but be, we can use the hot oils. You can diffuse thieves. You can. It has clove. It has cinnamon. It's okay. You can do that. I diffuse citrus oils almost every day. You can do that. It's okay. I even do the raindrop on my cats. It has oregano but it's heavily diluted. It's probably 95% carrier oils in that. So just be gentle with the hot oils, the, the oils that are very high in phenols. Phenols is what gives the oils the scent. So if, it, so if an oil is really smelly, like what you see on your screen, just be cautious, just be careful, okay? But I've never had a problem with them. Do I need to use pine oils? No but I diffuse them. My cats are fine. If they don't like them. They come upstairs to where I don't have a diffuser running, but they actually stay around the diffuser. All right. Next question I get, how do I use oils with my pet? So that's where I go into great detail in the oily pet book, but I'm going to show you a couple of videos. Um, the big thing is to always get permission. Okay, we don't shove oils in an animal's face. Just like, I want you to think about the oil that smells the worst to you. For me, it's Immupower. That stuff smells like a sweaty camel's underarm. I, and I know what that smells like, unfortunately. Um, that stuff is heinous. I need it, which is why it smells so horrible to me. If somebody shoved that in my face, I would push back. <laughs> It would not be pretty. We don't do that to animals, okay? Unless it is an emergency situation, we always get their consent. And I'm going to show you a couple of videos of how I do that. 
but how do you use oils? You can use it the same way with pets. You know, um, aromatically, I, it, when you're working on a behavior issue with an animal, they, they need to smell it just like we need to smell it because that's where emotions and behavior are stored in the brain. Okay, so aromatically, diffuse, let them smell from the bottle, you know, get the new car diffuser if you're transporting animals. Um, you know, so use it aromatically. You can put oils on surfaces, you know, never, never on a collar. Oh my gosh, I've seen some recommendations. No, 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 no. That is the equivalent of taking the oil that smells the worst to you, sticking it on a collar around your neck and you can't take it off. No, no. They have to be able to walk away to say I've had enough. So oils never ever go on a collar. You can put it on a toy, you can put it on a blanket, um, you can put it on a crate. Um, again, very light because if you're crate training, again, they can't get away from it. So you gotta be careful about that. Um, topical. If, if an animal is over 25 pounds, you can do one drop straight on their body. Down their spine is where I always put the oils, never on the paws. Animals detox out through their paw pads. We don't wanna put an oil in and shove everything back up in. Plus pets don't like that. Just put it down the spine because when an oil touches the body, it saturates it, just like it does with us. It saturates it. So just play it easy, put it down the spine. And um, if, you know, if, a, if an animal is 25 pounds or more, you can do one drop straight. It doesn't have to be dripped on the skin. It can be on fur or on hair, which will then act, act as a wick and send the oil right into the body. Um, for cats, I always dilute at about an 80 to 90% um, carrier oil to 10 to 20% essential oil. So think about those 10 ml roller bottles. I basically fill it all the way to the top. And in a 10 ml, I will put 10 drops of essential oil. So that's very, very high dilution. And when we dilute with a carrier oil, it doesn't dilute the potency. It dilutes the entrance into the body and slows it down. It's like a time release, okay? And then internally, my cats drink Ning Shred every day. They get it in their wet food. Don't put oils in, in a water bowl because the oil's gonna sit on top. It'll deter the animal from drinking and we never wanna do that. Um, you can put oils in a capsule. If you can pill your animal, you can do that. You can do that. Um, with some oils, depending on the strength and the flavor, you can put it on the inside of the gum and it goes in through the mucous membrane. But the way that we use oils, you can use with your pets. All right, I wanna show you some stories here. Okay, this is my Jacob. I only had him for five years. I got him late in life. He was a beautiful, beautiful cat. Um, let's see. I don't think I have the volume on. Here, hold on real quick. I gotta do, I have to do a new screen share and make sure I click. Yep, I gotta click share sound. All right, hold that thought. All right, hold that thought. Here we go. This is a little clunky, but I forgot to do that to begin with. All right, here we go. This one doesn't really have sound. <laughs> the others do. So I'm testing to see what Jacob wants. So there's geranium. I want you to watch his face, his eyes, and his nose. See how he came to it? He could smell it before I even brought it near him. I'm about, a, about nine to 12 inches away. When a pet comes to it, they're giving consent. When they don't run away from it, I think you've got a winner there. Helicrisham. I'm always looking at kind of squinting of the eyes to see if it's too harsh. So I'm about a foot away. I don't put it in his face. 
see his eyes, it, it's too much. He's not coming to it. He's like, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Get that helichrysum away from me. Melissa. This is the oil I like to use with highly sensitive pets. Watch his eyes. See his nose? He's like, oh, no, no, too, too much. Too much. So of those three oils, he consented to geranium. All right. Yeah, it, it's when they're squinting like that or when they run away, do not chase them down. Don't, but don't put it in their face. I go halfway, they got to come the other halfway to tell me that they want it. Okay, this one I just posted yesterday on social media. And I was really surprised at the result. I'm testing eucalyptus radiata against copaiba. Copaiba virtually has no scent. But watch Rudy's reaction. He's like, no, mm -mm. look at eucalyptus. I was really surprised. I was really surprised. Eucalyptus is sharp. That is a hot oil. Okay. So always get their consent. Let them choose. Okay. You know, you get to choose every day what oils you want to use. Let them choose. All right, here are my favorite pet essential oils. The blends are not in the Oily Pet Book. Okay, these are not in the Oily Pet Book. The single oils are, the blends are not because of trademark. Okay, so, you know, keeping the air fresh and healthy, you can diffuse anything, really, you can. I like lemon, I like purification, I like these. For calming, <clears throat> my favorites are Melissa, which is for highly sensitive people and pets, you know, pets that are really reactive. I like that. Valerian is ultra calming. You know, if you need your pet to calm their butt down, Valerian, okay? I also like acceptance because um, it allows pets to just accept what is happening. A new pet in the house, a new baby in the house, you know, a child moved away to college, somebody moved out of the house, you're moving to a new house and they're just pushing back. Acceptance is great. Um, Valor for courage, white angelicas, like just wrapping them in a warm protective blanket. It's very soothing. Um, for, you know, harmony in the home, harmony is a good oil. So is lavender and acceptance, you know, just to make sure everybody's getting along. Um, you know, for pets that are, you know, a little lethargic and maybe they're sad. Um, I really like frankincense. I like inner joy, especially with older pets. I like joy. I like release, you know, to help them release whatever is making them not feel themselves. Um, for abused and neglected pets, again, I like Melissa. Trauma life oils are in TOA. TOA has even more. So you don't need both, one or the other. I like release, I like valor. Um, and and you, you can see what I use there. Even for oral hygiene, uh, brushing the teeth of cats, not very easy. Um, but I like a, a cap full of thieves mouthwash in like a half a cup of coconut butter, not, not, the, not the fractionated oil, like the hard stuff. And I will melt it down so that it mixes together and then hardens back up. And then I literally just put a little bit on my pinky and I jam it in their mouth. <laughs> it's not very elegant <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, for dogs who are better, you can put it on a toothbrush. So, um, so that's what I like. I love purification in the litter box. That is amazing. I have a Facebook reel that has over like 225,000 views of me just putting purification in a litter box. Who would have thought that? <laughs> and then for senior pets, oh, my favorite, Copaiba and frankincense topically applied is, is absolutely my favorite. Giving them Ningxia Red in wet food. 
So with my cats, they get their wet food. I put, I run a little water over it. I drip some Ningxia red in it and I smush it all together. They love it. Um, even Agilis, you can break it apart and sprinkle it on food. Um, just look at how much is required for a human being. Do the math and break it down to the body weight of the pet, okay? So this is um, one of my favorite blends, especially during fireworks season, when things go boom in the sky. Um, you can turn this into a roller bottle, or you can blend it all together and then have it pre-made to put in your diffuser. Um, but it is, it is very powerful with valor, lavender. You can choose stress away or peace or calming, um, patchouli, vetiver, and, and valerian. So these are all, um, I call it be calm little one. It is, it helps them really chill out because, you know, when an animal is feeling um, nervous, uh, frightened, they need to smell an oil. That's not where topical application is going to help in my opinion, okay? Topical is for something with the body. When you're dealing with emotions and behavior, they gotta smell it. All right, speaking of behavior, all right, I do a lot of work in shelters. So I'm gonna show you this of what I do. Okay. You want to smell? You've been very agitated. You've been very agitated. Well, that seems to be working better than the peace and calming. Mm-hmm. You're okay. So there was only a couple of minutes between the first video when he was really agitated and that video. Only a couple of minutes. Okay, and I tested peace and calming versus valor, and I wave the oils like I, I turn the oil in bottle into a diffuser, I wave it and see what they do with it. Um, and it absolutely worked. Um, now, before I go to the next slide, I was looking at the chat um, question about oils for fleas. So Young Living has an insect repellent that is specifically labeled for fleas and ticks. Okay, so use Young Living's insect repellent. Um, I, it's, it's already pre-diluted, so if you want to use it on a cat, um, just put a little bit down the spine. Um, uh, Tanitha, will, will Valerian work on a crazy Malinois? So um, my brother-in-law used to run the canine division at the Secret Service and had a Malinois. I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Valerian and vetiver together. I call it the pass out oils, um, the calm your butt down oils. So, um, all right, I'm looking at the rest. Um, okay, I think I got everybody's answered. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. All right, um, this was, if you remember in, I believe it was September 2019, um, Hurricane Dorian <clears throat> basically destroyed the Bahamas and a lot of the other uh, Caribbean countries. And before it hit, the Humane Society of Greater Bahamas evacuated their shelter, flew all the animals uh, stateside. And here in Michigan, we got 130 dogs 
10 of them specifically came to a shelter that I work with in my hometown. This was Bahama Betsy. So she was not in good shape. For four days, she sat in her cage and shook violently. Um, she couldn't keep anything down. Everything's coming out of both ends. And they thought they were going to lose her. And I worked with her. Um, the, the, I, I only had to work with her for about 10 minutes. And I got um, digize on her stomach. I got valor down her spine and I had her smelling valerian and vetiver. She needed to sleep. First of all, that was a big thing. She needed to, to calm down enough to sleep. And I mean, it was just amazing how it worked with her. I love helping shelter animals because if they can show their best self in a shelter, they have a better chance of getting adopted. So um, again, how the oils totally saved her life because she probably didn't have a good outcome and medically probably just would have died with what she was going through. Um, I love working with donkeys. Okay, these guys are loud. So this is Happy. He is, he is the largest donkey I have ever seen and he is full of personality, aren't you? What do you think about the oils? <laughs> you are awesome. What do you think? He's like, bring, bring, bring me another. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I know you, I know you want to eat it. Why don't you just smell? I grew up with donkeys, so I know oh, that. Happy's yeah. like, that's my oil. <laughs> Look at, no, <laughs> no. All right, I'm putting up this warning. Um, I hope the first slides don't upset anybody, but I really want you to know that this kitty is healed and beautiful and loved and she got adopted a year ago and I still have visitation to see her but I want to show you I want to show you how they helped how the oils really helped I know that's really hard to see this was not intentional they think she got caught in an engine but this is Marnie um, the shelter asked me to foster her and I pulled out all of my bag of tricks and she was, she was getting veterinary care. They had to anesthetize her every week to debride her, her burns and pull the scabs off. And they had to, oh, it was, it was really a hard process for her. I had her in care for three months. And I wanna show you this, this video of the things that I was doing. So I had her in care for three months. This was day nine. Thank, thank. Um, I have diluted myrrh and helichrysum in almond oil, which is very nourishing for the skin. And I'm just dripping it down her spine. Ah, uh, yep, I know. Don't bump me with your head. Oh, don't do that, honey. You're going to rub everything off. And you're probably wondering why I did myrrh and helichrysum. And compliantly, I'm not allowed to say. You can just look it up. But think of, think of, no, don't do that. <laughs> think of what she's dealing with. And it'll give you an idea of why I'm using that. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Seriously, all I do is say no to her. Because she just wants to rub her head. I'm sure it itches. Honey, 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 honey. What are you doing? Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, I know you just want, you want so much love. Yep, yeah, don't bonk me with your head, but you look so much better. You look so much better. Um, I am also using the Lavaderm spray because it's specific for burns. And I'm doing very small amounts, very small. And not even, not really on the, no, don't do that. Don't lay it, sit, 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 sit. I'm kind of picking 
oops, certain areas and testing them out. She's probably gonna lose the tips of, of both of her ears. So I'm just doing one little small area as a test. And after being in foster care for a week and going back to the shelter for her treatment where they take the scabs off and stuff like that, um, they are amazed at how well she's healing. So this is a combination of veterinary medicine and essential oils. That was her on her adoption day a year ago. So she did lose the, the, the ends of her ears, but she looks super cute. Um, and, oh, Come and, on. and, and I've had, I've had a chance to, um, see her. I, I go see her about every month. So she's doing amazing. Um, the oils really helped. And even the shelter veterinarian who did not understand oils, she said, I don't know what you're doing, but just keep doing it. So you saw that I put some oils down her spine. The, even though I needed to get them on the burns, um, the burns were pretty bad. So I just wanted to get the oils in her body to begin with. Um, so that was kind of uh, the initial part of doing that. So again, you don't have to get the oils directly on the part that you wanna help, just get them down the spine. That's the main thing. And then um, my cats, they get Nanxia Red three to five times a week in their wet food. I do either a frankincense copaiba topically or a frankincense helichrysum topically. And if you don't know why, look up what those oils do. Okay. Um, my Dobby is 14 years old. So he's elderly. Rudy's nine. Stella is six. So, um, and then I even blend together the raindrop oils in a 90% carrier oil dilution and they get that down their spine. So I kind of alternate and then Stella, because, well, she's kind of portly, <laughs> she, she's just the cutest little butterball. <laughs> I give, I break up an Agile's capsule. And it takes me about a week to go through a capsule, but I sprinkle a little bit in her food so that her joints on her legs, on her cute little legs, uh, stay well. All right, so um, if you're a silver or above or want to go to a silver or above in your team, if you can get 20 people in a class, I'll come and teach a class to your team, okay? So just reach out and let me know if you want to do that. And if you want to get the book, use coupon code Zoom. You're going to get 10% off. I also have a bulk discount. And, um, you know, definitely stay connected because my cats and the other animals I work with, I put all over my social media pages to help educate. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording um, and just thank everybody who's watching the recording for being here. So I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to take some questions live here. Okay, so just hang on for a second.